The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome to my brother, my brother made an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I am your sweet baby brother and 30 under 30 media luminary Griffin McElroy. Speaking of babies. Yes. They done did the thing. They had another, there's another royal baby who I saw a lot of uh, news outlets just simply referring to as second boy. <laughs> Which I thought was really <laughs> funny. Boy. You're the second boy. Second boy. boy. Can I be third boy? Yeah. Yes, you can be the third boy. You can I'm be best boy key grip. Three boy? Me? Who me? Three boy? I love this new baby. I can't wait for him to reign over all us. I can't <laughs> wait to follow run. this baby's every command and die in his beautiful army. I like second boy. <laughs> I question their decision to have him voiced by Will Arnett. It's like, strange. Yes. It's a Very little strange. much. Um, yes. who, who even wins in the fight between the boss baby and the king baby? Right. Could, Amazing. Yeah, because I think boss baby would be like, you know, goo goo gaga, <laughs> hand me my briefcase. But king baby's like, die in my army, king bo- boss yeah. baby. I also think that the crossover when they added the minions to, to work for second boy. That what was are they much. even? Little, little yellow babies. I don't even know. They look like Tic Tacs. What's going yeah, on there? Yeah, what's up? I do love that they call the future king baby, they named him Ralph. I uh-huh, think that's hysterical. Yeah. And the way Prince, the prince of him, uh-huh. the dad prince, yeah. lowered his sunglasses when he said it is like, the baby Oh, he'll be King Ralph. And then he like did And then the, the banners take. dropped, which I thought was yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> it's so that. good. When I was getting my hair cut, the person cutting my hair talked to me completely <laughs> unironically. I thought you were just length. gonna stop there. <laughs> no, completely unironically at length about the it's new baby. About second boy. And it seems like that should be against the law because it was a lot of like you could tell like comments like you could tell that they really love each other and i think it's really nice that the baby is being raised in such a loving environment and i mean a lot of different things that i had a lot of comments that i had to ingest about the baby king and it seems like unfair Cut in that position, right? I can't. I'm captive. I'm a oh, hair. So I'm just, sorry, I'm just, Justin. I'm sorry. I just want to clarify, please, King Baby, because Baby King sounds like the King of Babies. Mm-hmm. Might well, be. I think that yeah, might be K- how it works. But oh, King shit. Baby is a Kate, a Kate Beaton book uh-huh. that I don't want to. I don't want to step on Kate's trademark. What have you all brought for the King Baby? I thought maybe we could take a moment here, present him with our. Oh, it's our gifts. new segment. Hold on. Ba 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 ba. What's a tribute? All right, King. Oh, sweet baby. Happy birthday. Welcome to Earth. You're going to make such a special impact. I brought you something that you don't have over here across the pond. Eh? Fishy sheeps. But I'm so sorry for that, King Baby. But anyway, here is my tribute for you. Please do not dragoon me into your crusade. But I did bring you all my old tech decks. And you are going to love these. Maybe maybe Daddy can show you. Because Harry, Harry, Harry. You remember <laughs> Harry? You remember Griffin? Harry's the uncle. Who's the daddy? That's William. B- Bill. King Bill. King Bill. You remember doing Cause, the flips? Because Harry is the pruncle, prince uncle. Now. Oh, you're right. Okay, let me take it again. Okay. Uh, Bill, you remember? Oh, he swallowed him. He swallowed all the tech. Decks. Oh no. Oh, his guts are skateboarding around doing vert ramps off the big intestine. Oh shoot, <laughs> guys, I'm so sorry. I sh- shit it up real bad. Uh, Travis, what, 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 what's your tribute? Um, my tribute is myself. I have been um working out um I so that I can defend uh King Baby. What a sweet boy! Oh, happy birthday! You know. 
What a Ju- sweet kid. Justin. He's yep. here. What did your what's your tribute? Can you do the can you do the jingle? Bo, 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 I can't I can't remember the bo, 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 What's your tribute? tribute? Mine's mustard. And I huh. think that if the ba- yeah, because okay. if the baby may be young for mustard now, but if we start the baby on mustard at at twelve months, uh or maybe it's actually six months we can start with mustard because it's not a solid food. If we start the baby with mustard at six months, then by the time he has reached fluency with adulthood, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Then he'll be the one that loves mustard. And I might have a shot at telling these fucking people apart when I am being told about mm. their various exploits and tricks. Oh, the mustard I can, It can all be in reference. For me, at least I'll have one fucking touchstone where I can say, is that the mom of the one who loves <laughs> mustard? Is that the one who loves mustard's cousin? Is that the son of the one who loves mustard? At least I'll have something <laughs> that can that help me explain, decode. That explains the t-shirt when they presented Royal Baby to the crowds, the t-shirt that said, I'll be your anchor point, or King yes. Baby is your constant. That's what the My says. constant in the royal family, that apparently people over here are just gaga for, even though we... We threw off their Gaga. shackles of their rule. They are now ruling our social media and what have you through these extremely important babies that everyone is just just Gaga over. If you'll pardon the, did you the not pun. hear me earlier when I said Gaga? I said I uh, said I'm reinforcing your bit. Oh, thank you, thank yeah. you so much. Oh, King Baby. Oh, what if dastardly first baby then decides that they also like mustard? Justin, your whole plan's got. Oh, right in the no one else can have mustard. Okay, period. Yeah. The end. Good luck enforcing uh, that. Sydney brought something up to me that I uh, the only thing I think is interesting about the royal family, besides the one who loves mustard, <laughs> the new baby, who probably does have a name. Um Prince Mustard. Prince Mustard. Did you realize that every time they crank out another one, it kicks Harry down? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> notch in the lineage. Boy, that's got to be a mixed bag of emotions, huh? <laughs> you know, I, here. I thought well, about oh, that's this. cool. So I'm six now, huh? Okay, cool. So it's just the one baby boy, and then the baby girl, and then this other baby, and then great. Y'all too. <laughs> nice. Great. I'm not the Duke of uh, North Northshire anymore. Cool. That's the babies now. Great. Can't wait to see how they run it. So I guess I'll just hand over the paperwork. Great. Here's my scepter, baby. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy. Loved that scepter. Uh, excuse me, Ari. Could you scoot down, please? Could you scoot down? <laughs> but there's the no more. There's the no more table. bench. Um, oh, we'll just ooh. pull up a, a folding chair for you. <laughs> but, <laughs> Harry, at the end there. Harry, okay. thank you. Make uh, some room for me to put this fucking uh, uh, car seat that I pulled out. I'm just going to sit here at our very fancy uh, uh, secession table. I think that maybe, like, there's... But there's benefits to it, too. I, but oh. Maybe, like, every time there's a new royal baby... Prince Harry, like things like, oh, I'm one step closer to being able to get that face tattoo I've always wanted. You know, mm-hmm. like, right. oh, yeah. there's no chance. Yeah, there's no chance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, finally. Oh, I'm so close to just being able to retire. You know what I mean? Because, like, right. being a prince for life isn't bad. But if it's like, oh, no, you're the, you know, you're going to get the call, man. You're on call. That's a lot of pressure to be ready to king at any point, you know? Just take over it at, at any point. It's it's terrifying. It's too much. And that's it. Okay. Shoo. Ten minutes. We, we did it, everybody. Got ten minutes oh, out of the royal family. Do not Whoa. get it twisted. That is gonna end up being a tight five and a half by the time <laughs> I get oh, done with it. Okay, well we have recorded for ten minutes and honestly that's all I can do. Uh that's as far as I can. Is that I the whole episode? This. That's that's a basically the entire episode. No, we got all, all all kinds of fun stuff to talk about. <laughs> I live on the third and top story of a walk up with one other neighbor sharing the landing outside my door. I do not know these neighbors well, but I've seen them in passing. Sometimes they will put a f- bag of trash outside their door to be taken down later. This does not bother me because I know they have young children. It would be difficult for them to run the trash down every time it's full. Thank you. Occasionally, when I'm taking my own trash down or taking my dog out, I think, oh, I should just grab that and run it down for them. Then I stop and think, no. Don't do that. They will go crazy trying to figure out what happened to their trash. Is that too weird? 
or just something a nice neighbor would do. What should I do? That's from Wastebag Weirdo in Washington. First of all, they're not the stupids. So they're not going to think somebody has <laughs> stolen their trash. And you need to perish that thought. Nobody on earth would ever be upset at their trash going away. And in fact, if you did that to my house, I would name my next child after you. It was going to be Prince Mustard, but I will name them Wastebag Weirdo in Washington if you did this for me. To never touch that trash again. This is such a bad thing because you put out your trash and you set it down, but not in the can. And it's like, oh, I got a date with you later, don't I? You stinky bag. <laughs> I think maybe maybe you take the trash bag and you leave a quarter and you start to develop like a whole mythos about like the trash, trash fairy. Trash fairy, yeah. I think I mean, that a fairy can lift a tooth. A tooth is quite small. I don't think they're gonna have the you know, the guns to lift up a full bag full of probably diapers, which are maybe the heaviest a, the heaviest substance on earth is diapers. Trash Incredibly gremlins. Dense. Trash gremlin could be fun, but then it couldn't be a quarter. It would have to be like a little buggy worm or something. Yeah. A little grubbin. I think you're creating behavior with this that it, that will be damaging to this person in the long run. Uh, because if if one time I put my trash outside my front door and it disappeared, I would never, ever, ever carry my trash down again. <laughs> Never. You've taught me that some that mm. somehow it's getting down there. So I would not go through the extra work of taking it all the way down for the rest of my life. Your mind Ooh. is so good at filling in gaps, especially when those gaps involve touching the trash ever again or doing any work ever. I would just assume that like the police have started doing this for us. Like, oh, uh, yeah, the police have a new service where they'll come into our walk up. And then go up to the third floor, and they'll just grab the trash out of there. Thanks. I, sh- I sure am glad we elected that new mayor. Yeah. Really taking care of the trash. I will say that the problem here is if you do this consistently, to Justin's point, if you do this like four times in a row, right? And then on the fifth time, you don't? And they open the door, and the trash is still there. They're going to be like, oh, no. Is neighbor person mad at us? I am incapable of not just taking the trash to the can and putting it in there, because 100% of the time... A trash bag's going to have chicken juice in it. And I don't care if you're a yep. vegan and it doesn't have chicken juice in it. I don't care if it's Somehow. just if it's just lawn clippings that you did from your apartment where you have <laughs> inside grass and you put that in a bag and you put it out on the floor outside. You're going to have a big chicken juice puddle. It is just the default state of trash. They gonna, they're going to find the bones. And there will be raccoons that are going to pull bones out of it even if there's not bones They'll find a bone in there. There's a bone in there somewhere. And they're going to find it, raccoons. I was just going to say that I've been running a long-term scam on my trash guys where that I bring my adorable children out to thank them every time they come get the trash. And that is, one, because it, it's just a nice thing to do. And it's probably kind of a thankless job a lot of the time, so I like to go out there and say thank you. And, uh, you know, leave a nice tip around the holidays. You know, I like to take care of them so I can throw progressively weirder things away. More heinous. Not yeah. just weirder, but bigger. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. every time, I don't like, uh, like, I'll send Charlie out there and we'll kind of, like, wave because I'm afraid to go out by myself because I hate watching their reactions to see what they think about the things that I've tried to throw away. Because I'll try to throw away a lot of things that I probably should take somewhere where grown-ups will handle mm-hmm. it for me. And when um, they do a double take at it, me. when they do a double take, there's only so many times you can say, I know, right? Before yeah. you just yeah. have to stop doing it. Um, My Christmas I... tree is the one that I oh, feel. Oh, juice. Just. Yeah, because it's like, there's certainly a place those are supposed to go, but I don't know where or how. So I just put that out there. It's lucky that it comes right after that good old Christmas tip. Yeah. Because hopefully that's still fresh in their minds when they think, I'll just throw this dead ass tree in my truck. Do you do you wrap it up like Laura Palmer? You just like leave it out there. (sighs) Wrapped in plastic. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, How about a Yahoo? There's dang (laughs) Go ahead. Fish in the percolate. (laughs) Uh, This is from Merritt Palmer. Thank you, Merritt. Yes. It's from Yahoo Answers user. Uh, they're anonymous, so I'm going to call him Bob. Asks. <laughs> I don't know. That yum, you like. Asks. Yes. Is Yahoo a good stock? <laughs> <laughs> 
sort of an or- this from? Ouroboros. Where is this from? When? when is this from? Oh, that's a good question. A week ago. A week no, ago, you're, hard no. Are you kidding? 1999? Sure, buddy. Let her rip, but keep your finger <laughs> on the on the escape hatch because it'll be good forever. <laughs> um so we never talk about the, you know, the <laughs> The bull and the bear that we like to wrestle with sometimes that we call the stocked market because mm. it can be so exciting and mm, mm-hmm. you put your money in and then you see what happens. Maybe and good. Nothing maybe. ever goes wrong. Sometimes it goes wrong. Uh, what? Pets. Pets. Com went bad. Um, oh shit. Pets. Com did not work out. Pets. Com. Can did I bad. be honest? I haven't checked in a while. I put a lot of money into Pets. Com. All right. Did well, check. It. Work- Actually, do see. Oh, you know what? It just bumped back up. That's yeah. You just made a million dollars. And that's every day. You did put in a billion dollars, though. That's every ah, day. Shit. That's every day on this market that we call stock because it's so exciting. And so this person either has many dollars invested in Yahoo and doesn't know how to read the little ticker, uh, which I don't blame them for. It's like, I don't know what the symbol is for Yahoo. Um, if it's any indication of like what their service is actually like, it's just farts. It says like farts, negative a million percent, no <laughs> money left. But knowing what we know about this service, is Yahoo a good stock? Well, it, okay. Well, Here's the thing. If you think about it, isn't everything a stock market? You know, because you're like, you're choosing to invest in friendship or you're choosing to invest in like fandom or you're choosing. So maybe we should look at this as like, if am I, is, is Yahoo Answers a good thing for me to invest my time and brainwaves into, which Mm. is no. But so then like, again, we we invested in it 404 episodes ago real hard, and it's yeah, paid off. It's paid, paid off big, big dividends. dividends for us. But I do love the idea of a friend stock market, because you can just be like, how's Terry doing? Like, actually, that one thought it was a blue chip, way in the red on that one, farted right in my car. And so <laughs> the, it took a big downturn, the, the Terry stock. Sell, sell, sell. Get rid of Terry. Sell, sell Terry. Anybody looking to pick up some Terry, I got it. I got Terry for dimes on the dollar. Come on. I used to think, hey, do you want to <laughs> hang out today, Todd? Oh, I can't. <laughs> Actually, Chuck bought up all my Terry stock. I'll tell you about yeah. my Terry stock. I got I to gotta go and uh, di- divest. But I heard he got uh, recently some butt surgery. So this one's looking real good. Uh, a lot of upswings in the future. You know how you always see the people running around all higgledy piggledy on the the floor of the stock market whenever people are talking about it that's like the image that you see like everybody going buck wild out there with all like papers in hand and they're yelling about stuff until a, an upsettingly recent point mm. i thought that when they sold a stock they had to find someone to sell it to <laughs> I thought that they had to find <laughs> someone who would be like, yeah, I'll buy that. That's I, thought that, I thought that's why they were running around so wild, because they were trying to find somebody who would buy the best. I got Chiqu- I got like a hundred Chiquita shares. Anybody like bananas? I got kids that like bananas. I got you a good I'll price. Also do, I'm doing trades. If anybody's got one of the Walt Disney World commemorative <laughs> pins from the uh, like 87... Debut season. I got a Pikachu. Anybody need a Pikachu? For Chiquita. I got 100 Chiquitas. 100 Chiquitas for like a Bulbasaur, maybe? I don't know how this works. Got a Kadabra. I'm looking for 10 shares of Google. This dude's going to evolve when I trade him, so that's that's a a money earner right there. Justin, if it makes you feel any better, I'm 34. I still don't 100% know what This could be fun. So they run around the stock market floor and they got the pieces of paper that I guess have either the stocks on it or an amount of money that they have. And it's just a way of sort of really like, thin so, pieces of paper because I think they can't afford like thick paper. Yeah, yeah. That famously uh, unwealthy. <laughs> so let's go around and just sort of describe how we think stock market works. Uh, and Justin, maybe you can start with it. <laughs> I well, I feel like I described how I, I did think that, that it went. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, you I roll up, like you kinda... show up, you, you get out of your fancy car and you walk inside. You have a few slips of paper that I guess say like, <laughs> you know, uh, yo play, I, let's, ba- let's yo play the... basketball and eggs. These are let's my three stocks. The things. I want to get into the stock market. Yeah. Okay. I call, this is how I understand it. I call somebody who knows somebody that lives in New York mm. and, they, and, they, and they will go there to buy the Yahoo for me. Yeah. And they'll say like, Justin wants to buy Yahoo. Who's got Yahoo? Who's who's hitting? Who's got Yahoo to sell? And maybe yeah. nobody wants to sell theirs and that's how stock prices go up because everybody wants to have some mm. Yahoo. Uh-huh. And then, and then, oh no, things have taken a downward No turn. one wants Yahoo. No one wants Yahoo. And then it's very easy to find it because everybody's- They're just dropping it on around. the ground like it's a racetrack. I thought legitimately that the papers in their hand were the shares. I thought that that was like, when people talk about shares. In movies, they open up old boxes and they're like, what, this is a hundred shares of shares Bell telephones right. or whatever. Right. I will say how I always thought it worked. Okay, Travis, please. Um, Because you see them and they're like yelling kind of up into the air, like I'll take whatever. I always assume there's like one person who's like writing all that down, who's like, slow down, slow down. What did you say? Right. How much did you? Okay, I'll see if that is a bit. Wait, what did you? Hold on. Who who said it first? Everybody get in line or something. What if I go to stock market and I have a slip of paper and I say, y'all is a hot one. I'm looking for a lot of money, like, mm-hmm. 500, for like $500. And you can get all my shares in apples and then they see the slip of paper and it says apple in big letters they're like yeah sure here's five hundred dollars and then i say thanks and i take all the bills away from them and then they look at it and it does say apple in big letters but then there's a small s at the end of it because i've just sold them shares in apples the fruit and then now i'm five hundred dollars richer and nobody eats fucking apples anymore is that legal yeah. Yes. <laughs> I gotta go then. <laughs> uh, here is another uh, question from one of our beloved readers. So my girlfriend goes to college, and she is very into geology and rocks. At her school, her geology teacher tried to get her set up on a date with his nephew, who is a geologist. She said, "No, thank you. I have a boyfriend." To which he responded. Is your boyfriend a geologist? Didn't think so. Brothers, do I need to fear these rock experts stealing my girlfriend? Must I become a rock expert to keep my four-year relationship intact? That's from Demolished in Detroit. Yeah. 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 You're going to have to get yeah. super into rocks. Yeah. You learn to learn about rocks. And we can help you with that. Limestone. Big, agate. Agate. Big gray. Geodes. Small, heavy, small brown, concrete, <laughs> volcano. Vo- oh, oh, oh. <laughs> volcano rock. Some of the hardest salt. rock there is. Salt is a bunch of uh, delicious rocks, tasty rocks. rocks, melt in your mouth rocks. Candy, candy is not well. Rock candy. Yes, thank you. That's also, there's true. pebbles that kind of look. It's candy that looks Fruity like pebbles. pebbles the oh, rock. Um, the rock is another one. Rock and roll. Yeah, the music. Blue uh, Dream, Maui Wowie. Magnets, mm. how do they work? Different um, strains of sativa. I think this helps. I th- yes. Here's the thing. No one actually knows anything about rocks. How would you even look into a rock? So you could say anything is inside of a rock and no one knows. That is and such a good point, Travis. Thank you. Yeah, so like. You I'm so be- fucking glad you said that, dude, because it was yeah. fucking good. So, like, you could, like, take your girlfriend out on a date to, like, a canyon or whatever and point and be like, see that? That's full of dead fish or whatever. And, like, yeah. who the fuck knows? You can't see through rocks. No one's got to find out what's in that rock, so you can say whatever. I think you got to show up to the school, and I think you got to pick up the biggest rock they have, and I think you need to take a big bite out of it. <laughs> Okay. And then you sw- chew it I up. Talk about you- how big and strong your hands are. You chew it up and you swallow it, and you look at it and be like, this is the stuff you guys are into. <laughs> okay. And then and you, you leave. shred on a guitar. And then you leave and then go immediately to the hospital. Oh, time is of right, the essence. Right away. Um, 
That's that that Fraggle Rock flavor is such a power move, and they're gonna it's love so it. So good though. Do it you think looks so good? I get really excited when I'm like down when I'm kayaking, when I'm hitting the yak, and I find a rock that has like a fossil in it. But do you think when a geologist finds that they're like, "Fuck, this rock is ruined"? Yeah. So let's go. Let's walk through that step by step, if you don't mind, Travis. Uh-huh. Um, just parse it. <laughs> We're while, learning a lot this time. While you're hitting the yak. Uh huh. And you see a rock big enough, I guess, to stick out of the water. And there's half a, a tyrannosaur just sort of poking out of it. Uh-huh. Um, you see that often? Well, you know, it's more like you, you, you pull your boat over, you pull your yak over to the side, and you just skip rocks for a couple hours. And maybe one in like a thousand has got like a leaf imprint on it. Or a little dinosaur. Or a little dinosaur. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then you think, well, I should hold on to this. And then you don't. Yeah, I mean, what if you pull out a diamond and you're like, Psh, I was looking for limestone. And you throw that away because you're such a fucking idiot. Or one time I was eating some oysters and I found a pearl. Mm. And uh, I don't know what I did with that. I lost that. Shit, that's a good story, dog. Am I a good geologist? <laughs> <laughs> one easy way to make it seem like you know more about rocks than you do if you're wanting to to maybe not put the time in is try to more frequently point out when something isn't a rock. Ooh. You're walking down the street, you see um, a fire hydrant or grass. Yeah. <laughs> like or a, a bird. Rap, a, bird a bird or maybe or a big rat bird. Just, just a big, turn maybe a big rock. Like, oh, no. <laughs> shit. Okay. Don't, fuck, do fuck, fuck, fuck. Don't do it to rocks. Don't do it to rocks. No, it's a rock. Wait, is the Statue a rock? Mm, Good question, Travis. Statue of Liberty, big green rock, yes or no? (laughs) Who knows? (laughs) No, that one's metal. I do know that one. But if you see, like, what about, like, you know, that David statue? That's made of rock. Is that a rock? Oh, oh, all righty. They got to come up with a better name for that David statue, by the way. I know, right? (laughs) What about? Well, it's like that 70s show. You know what I mean? Just name it something. Even if it's, like, David presented by Penn's oil or something. <laughs> yeah. It's like just give me some kind of name for it. What know? about what about Dave's real proud of his dick? <laughs> Dave's wiener. Peep peep Dave's ween. <laughs> Don't cover up Dave's ween. Fucking peep it. Peep keep this ween. Leaf. Keep your fig leaf, which is not a rock. Mm. In case you're curious. What if you had a dog made of rocks? Is that a rock or is it a dog? Oh, God, that's a good question, Travis. I'm just saying, geology's hard. I respect you, geologists. We're finally getting into some smart stuff, which I've I've obviously been wanting for a long time. It's so nice to get into some science on this one. Y'all, let's get into this. When when Michelangelo was carving the statue of David, Uh uh-huh, probably took a long time, right? Like, probably several weeks. Most of that's been on the ween. Well, that's the question. Okay. Okay. He finishes arm, torso, head, hair, face, legs. Did he save the ween for last? And I'm not saying he was like grossed out by it, but did he know like his friend Leonardo was talking to him? Like, what's what do you got going on tomorrow? Did he have even the thought of like, well, tomorrow's tomorrow's the wiener day? Like he had to have some sort of was it in his Google calendar, like or did he just do it and it didn't, you know, perish the thought, not a second thought about it? Or he had to at least for a second okay. be like, this is the thing that people are going to be arguing about for a while. I really got to nail this dingus. I, I'm going to bring one actual fact into this discussion what? and then we can go from there. I know. David, according to Google, according to a quick Google, took two years working constantly yeah. Whew, to Jesus. make. Get better jackhammer, dude. Hey, mm. dude, you're working really hard on this. Just statue. to make it out of cheese. Did you lick? Some- did you lick it and erode it with your spit? What's your deal, Michelangelo? How realistically, it took two years to make. Was there a a wiener month? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, how long do you think he spent on the? Was there a whole month where he's? They're like, come to dinner, and he's like, I can't. I have to keep working. <laughs> I wish on I this. could. I wish I could, but I want to make this penis look very good. Tell you what, you come over. You stare at this penis. If you think it looks done, then I'll come to dinner. But otherwise, let me go back to the lab and let me keep hitting this penis with a tiny chisel. 
Okay. And the bush, like and now. the and the bush too. Like he had to. How do you? The rest of it, I get. I want this torso to look fucking cut, and it is ripped. Awesome nips, perfect. Everything's great. Wiener, I think he just did it. He'd probably look at his own wiener and just be like, "All right, that's a wiener." But the bush, he had to have a moment. And again, I'm not stigmatizing. I'm not saying he was like, "Ooh, gross," a bush. But he had to make a judgment call at some point, like. He had his chisel. This was probably an entire, this was a week. He had a week where he just kept I, moving his chisel up and down the pubis. Like, where does it, where do we begin? I've done guy. some quick math. Yeah. The David statue is 17 feet tall. So 17 feet. What? That's yeah. much larger than I, how much of that though is the fucking pedestal it's standing yeah. on? It, well, but it's 17 feet tall divided by 24 months. means that every month he crafted 0.7. So like, about three quarters of a foot, right? So nine inches. So yes, I could say that just statistically speaking, there was a wiener month. Okay. So how was your September, Michelangelo? It was, it was intense. <laughs> Do you think he had a moment after he finished the belly button? And I assume that this is the way statues work, where you just sort of start at the top and work your way down. Uh huh. Do you think he had a moment after he finished the belly button where he thought, I should just put shorts to this motherfucking guy? I should just give this guy <laughs> so much fucking, easier. Just, if I just did shorts. some fucking shorts on the, do you do you think he ever had a moment when he was working on the penis and it got very challenging and irritating after like a couple weeks in, where he's like, "I'm just gonna knock this fucking thing off and draw some shorts on this guy." I'm just, I can't do this right now. I'm yeah. just going to put some fucking shorts on him. Or maybe just like got shorts. <laughs> just like, how do I get these shorts? I'm just going to buy shorts and put them on this. Maybe that's guy. why it took two years because it, it only took him a year to carve it. But the original version had shorts. And everybody came in going, I don't know about the shorts. And he was like, Chisel those off. Really? Another, another possibility is that he knew the statue he wanted to make. Didn't want to like waste a lot of time on it, so he tried to find a big rock that already had a dick on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so like when you whittle and you're like, oh, this is the perfect shape of like a bear and a log or whatever. Yeah, you this one is. He, he he looked for this was probably one of the years. Him wandering around, probably like Greece or something, looking for the perfect, the perfect rock, right dimensions, uh, easy density to carve into. A fully formed dick just kind of hanging off the side, <laughs> and now we're now that's what I call a statue. And it's good that the it, it wasn't like it probably wasn't way out on the inside, or else David, the final product, would be like a dude like leaning backward, arching his back with his wiener stuck way out there, like "Come at me," which may be a better statue. I I would like I would like someone to now carve a companion statue of Goliath, just kind of like, "Hey, do you need a second? Um. I'm ready to fight you, but if you want to like put on shorts or whatever, <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you're dressed for battle, my man. Um, um on this same uh website, uh, there's a uh, uh, it, there's a a fact that the David currently you can see he sits under a skylight that was designed just for him in the 19th century by Emilio de Fabri. I bet his friends never stopped hearing about that fucking window that yeah. I made, huh? Sort of like, well, it's sort of a collaboration <laughs> between me and Michelangelo, if you think about it, because, like, lighting is so huge in any form of art. So it's, like, kind of our stat. We know Emilio. We it's, know. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, he took it to the one yard line. Right. And I kind of ran it, <laughs> ran it through with my great window. So it's kind of like, it was my touchdown? You know, if you kinda think of about my it. Touch Michelangelo and Emilio's David is one thing. Or maybe if you want to go alphabetical, Emilio and right. Michelangelo's David. They're still le looking for a name for this fucking thing. They should call it Emilio and Michelangelo's David. Or M Emilio's David. Emilio's David featuring Michelangelo. Featuring Michelangelo. <laughs> and Pitbull, because that dude is just on everything. Did you, uh, listen, they don't tell everybody this, but did you guys know that he just found the penis? <laughs> I don't know if that denigrates the statue. So really, it's Emilio around. and God's Michelangelo, or <laughs> David with Michelangelo. With special guests And artists. introducing. And introducing Michelangelo. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, crap. So anyway, yeah, learn about rocks. That'll be good for your relationship. Uh, let's take a break and go to the money. Set. I've got about 25 David dicks on my monitor right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I have been staring at this picture far too long. Can I say? Beautiful Can statue. Say? Great. It's yeah, a really statue. good statue is the one thought that I've had seven times yeah. while we've been doing this. Like, man, that must have been really... I'm having a lot of fun here sort of dunking on people that are not here anymore to defend themselves with their great statue. But it's like a very good statue. It's like it a really good impressive. statue. It's like, I don't know how he did it. <laughs> Welcome to Art Appreciation <laughs> with my brother. My brother makes this week Michelangelo's David, a very good statue. <laughs> Super <laughs> detailed bush. Next week, next week, Starry Night. Too many stars? Maybe. Or not, or not enough. Or not, or not enough. enough. The hands are just so good. How do you do it? All right. Next week, Pennzoil presents Starry Night. Uh, okay, now it is actually time for the lesson. <laughs> Our first sponsor this week is Texture, the only app that offers unlimited access to over 200 top magazines, including People, The Atlantic, Time, and Vanity Fair. With Texture, you, you know, okay, you love magazines, right? But then they you get them, they clutter up your house, you got to find a place for them, you feel guilty about throwing them away if you haven't read anything. You can forget all of that once you have Texture. It's got over 200 top magazines and their back issues in a single app. So anytime you want to explore one, you can and Do they have issues up, of yakking weekly? I It's impossible for me to say, Travis. If you sign up right now at texture.com slash my brother, you get a seven-day free trial. How many magazines can you read in that seven days? I don't know. You tell me. Probably a lot. To start your free trial, go to texture.com slash my brother to start reading the latest issues of your favorite magazines today. That's texture.com slash my brother. You don't want a bunch of magazines around. You can just have them all in one app and read. There's a lot of great writing. There's a lot of great journalism and photography happening in magazines today. Uh, and I don't think that you should have to have them stacking up around your house. I think you should just be able to look at them on an app. And you're going to get pissed on the real physical magazines. Thank you. Yes, finally somebody said it. So texture.com slash my brother. You piss on your iPad, you just wipe it right off. Yep. Not a big deal. One of Steve's biggest priorities on that product. <laughs> Pittsburgh. Not even a big thing. Um, my brother, my brother, me is also supported in part by Away, makers of first class luggage at a coach price. I have an Away suitcase and I adore it. It has solid sort of metal body. Uh, you put stuff in there, it ain't going nowhere. It's got those cool things where like you can zip to close one of the interior chambers completely and like hold your clothes down. And there's like straps to help keep your shit organized. There's like a little bag like that sort of floats around on the inside that you can roll up and put all your toiletries in. And that's nice. And it has a little uh, USB charger thing that you can slot in. It's it's really slick. Uh, they use high quality materials while offering a much lower price by cutting out the middleman and selling directly to you. The interior features a pack patent pending compression system helpful for overpackers away carry-ons are able to char uh, charge all cell phones tablets and anything else that's powered by a usb port a single charge of the away carry-on will charge your iphone five times there's a lifetime warranty if anything breaks they'll fix it or replace it for you for life for twenty dollars off a suitcase visit awaytravel.com slash my brother and use the code my brother at checkout that's away folks there it is okay i want to tell you about we'll get it right next year, an adventure in cinema. So is we brought, bought a zoo about the mafia versus the FBI? A love story between Matt Damon and a Scarlett Johansson gorilla? Scientologists versus zombies in a dystopian run by, <laughs> by Big Funeral? Who are we to say what happens? We've never seen it. Michael and Ryan, hosts of the podcast, will get it right next year. Spend a year guessing what happens in a movie using bi-weekly scraps of info from reviews and quotes. It's surprisingly hard to avoid spoilers, and we respectfully ask Griffin to stop referencing the movie. I mean, if it makes you feel any better, I definitely fucking haven't seen it either. So I don't think I'm going to be able to spoil anything, but I can't say one thing, gang. I think it is a movie about purchasing sort of a homebrew zoo. And if that comes as a spoiler to you... It's it. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's in the fucking name of the movie. So that's We'll Get It Right Next Year, an adventure in cinema. It comes out every other Saturday on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's Check just it like the movie Ratatouille. You know it's about a rat. At one point, he's going to fucking make Ratatouille. And they try to treat it, it's treated like a big twist ending. And it's like, no, y'all, it's the title of the fucking movie. I mean, there it is. <laughs> uh, I have a message 
from Rob, and it's for Sarah. And the message says, Hi, lovely. Hope you're having a wonderful birthday. I'm thankful every day that you've chosen to build a life with me and our little rat-looking dog, Baby Issy. Uh, please know that you're better than Star Wars, and one day we will wrestle May 4th back from them. <laughs> In the meantime, let's go eat burritos and watch an anime you want to show me. That's the most beautiful... <laughs> generous message that I've ever seen anyone put in any of these. <laughs> Happy birthday to Sarah. Um, I have a message here. This one's for Joey, and it's from Sam, who says, Hey, Joey, happy 28th birthday slash congrats on receiving your PhD. It seems like just yesterday you were driving me to school and forcing me to listen to Will Smith's greatest hits. You should be so fucking lucky. Um, now you are married, have two adorable dog children, and can give professional advice. From your sweet baby sister, who is still waiting on her birthday gift, I love you. Uh, just jumbotrons are probably sold out, so never mind. That's the only gift that's worth a shit these days. Um, and so you you miss the boat on that one and don't know what to tell you. But maybe a, you know, a Fitbit. Hello, are you looking for a new comedy podcast? In which case, can I draw your attention to the Beef and Dairy Network podcast? It's a fictional industry podcast for the beef and dairy industries. It won Best Comedy at the 2017 British Podcast Awards, and it features wonderful guests such as Greg Davis. To my knowledge, it's the only cow circus that's ever existed in this country. In rural Russia, every small town has a cow circus. Josie Long. You should have a beef. Have a beef with them. I have a beef with you. I will have a beef with you. Come round my house and I'll have a beef with you. And Andy Daly. That virus never existed. There was never any such thing as a mad cow disease. That was all a, a, an illusion that uh, Big Lamb came up with. That's the Beef and Dairy Network podcast. Find us at MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcasts from. And I would recommend starting at episode one. Bye. If I invest in Yahoo stocks and then through this show talk about how good Yahoo is to try and get it doing better... And then I sell it once it's made more money because I did a good job talking about it. Is that okay? Is that a legal thing to do? Griffin, that's not a Yahoo Answers question. That's just a scam no, you want to pull. That's me. That's that's my whole thing right now. Just, I think, is that, wait, I was going to call that insider trading, but you don't work at Yahoo. So is that outsider trading? I don't know what any of that means. Okay. Is that what they got Martha Stewart on? That's what they got Martha on. That was actually cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Lots and lots of cocaine. Um, this is a Yahoo that was sent to us by Stacy Trombone, which is fantastic. It's from so Yahoo funny. Answers User Question Mark. This website's fucking falling down around my ears. Asks, what are some things you would tell your younger equestrian self? Here's my own list. One, just because the ponies you grew up riding were difficult, it doesn't make you a horse trainer. <laughs> Wow. Set your goals small. Stop thinking you have the ability to jump in big shows when you only jump small courses at home. <sighs> yeah. Man. Wake up, Patricia. <laughs> Don't waste money on bling. Think matchy-matchy gear. And spend your money on lessons. I like that one a lot. I like that one a lot. No one cares how much, you know, shiny metal you and your horse are wearing and matching. If you, you know, if it, you know, poops during a run, you got to train that shit out of them. Pay attention when the horse acts up instead of at, immediately considering it to be training issues. Shh, shh, shh. What's the problem? I'm listening. Plan ahead. Whenever everything is going well, be very cautious. Something not only can go wrong, but will go wrong. Yes. Number That's six. That's just a good life lesson. Number six, you don't need a foal. Seven, you don't need a wild horse. Just a eight, don't invest in that timeshare. Eight, take the harsh advice other people give you and learn from it rather than crying about it. Patricia, no matter how good you are at writing, people will always be better than you, and that's okay. Ten, don't fall for the cheap prices horses sell for. You will end up spending so much more time, money, and tears than you would if you had just bought a regular horse. Wait, here's, I want to. Here's a hundred dollars. <laughs> Can we drill down on the tears? Okay. <laughs> wait, hold on. We all have ones that we want to focus on here because I want to focus on the idea that there will always be someone better at writing than you. Statistically, that is not true. There has to be someone in the world who is the best horse rider. Uh, it's Why me. not and, you? Um, yeah, it's me. So I can go ahead and say, like, I've got another you know, few decades to kick it on this world. So don't even fucking try it. 
Um, so you don't need a foal. You don't need a wild horse. Don't buy a cheap horse because the rate, the quote, regular horse is going to cost you a bigger upfront investment, but you're going to cry way less. Because <laughs> if you get a cheap horse, you're going to have to spend so much money fixing it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's going to be in the shop more than it's not. Yeah. Just get a new horse. Don't buy used. Um, but as soon as you walk that ho- you that new horse off the barn, it's going to lose a lot of value. Especially yeah, if you walk so it true. off off a barn, it's going to lose a considerable <laughs> amount of value. <laughs> and so value. are you. So Although, are you. you know, I want to go back and say that I actually think, well, I think Seabiscuit was a used horse. And... Uh, Look at Seabiscuit. Yeah, but how? Okay, yeah, Seabiscuit won. But that movie specifically, how much fucking time, money, and tears did Topher have to? And that may have been Topher. Was it Topher? No, it was not Topher Grace. No, it was Spider Man. No, I think it was Spider Man. -Man. On that one. So Spider Man could have gotten, I think it could have just been Spider Man, right? And he could have gotten a regular horse. Topher Maguire. Topher Maguire could have gotten a regular horse and then won the race way faster. And I had to worry about how many tears he was going to have to produce. But would, know, you, when, would you rather the, have one expensive horse or ten cheap horses? That's a good point, Travis. <laughs> Did you know when that when Topher was filming the movie, Topher, um, Topher McGuire, McGuire. Uh-huh. was filming the movie? Did you know that he that he thought it was about him? He was very surprised when the movie came out and it was called Sea Biscuit because he thought it was about a, a movie about a guy who was so good at riding horses oh. that, that they made a movie about him. You so don't he think... was actually very very surprised that they would make a movie about a horse. You don't think when he showed up and the horse's trailer was bigger than his that he didn't like figure that out? Well, I mean, that one you got to chalk up to just physics. Oh, that, that's fair. Right, the, yeah, 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 the horse has got to have enough room to run around. So what uh, things would you tell your younger equestrian self? I think I'd start out just saying, like, don't just try as hard as you can to make your fingers look less like baby carrots. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I would say, like, hey, that horse is three people in a suit. Mm, I've been hurt too many times. Yeah, I'd rather know that ahead of time and go in eyes open rather than find out after five years. I mean, I got one. If you're this fro, if you're this froze up, and I'm maybe frozen. You can use I don't it. have yeah. any. I'm um, sorry. I- well, Justin, we all haven't all been perfect equestrians since birth, like you. Yeah. Um. I was now, just to go back. I and- just don't learn. I just keep doing it the same way oh, I did it when I started. You know. Um. I would go back and I would say, listen. I know Fast and the Furious movies are really hot right now, but don't put Nas in the horse. It <laughs> just doesn't work like that. You think you knew where to put it, and I think in your defense you put it in the best. If you are going to install a NOS, a nitrous booster system in the horse, I think you probably did it about as good as you possibly could, but it's just a sort of fundamentally flawed idea. I, I okay, I do have some uh, one piece of advice. Don't don't get frustrated with your horse and try to put him on your back mm-hmm. so you can show him how it's done yeah. and loudly announce like, "Let me show you how it's done." And then call over friends and family to say, "I'm going to show this horse how it's done," and then let the horse get on your back. Um, it's not. It's not going to pan out the way that you would would like it to go. Um, I would also say to young equestrian me, like, yes, a talking horse seems like a good investment, but after a while, like you and the horse will grow apart. And you will find his stories no longer interest you. And you've heard mm-hmm. the same stories over and over again. But legally, mm-hmm. you are still required to take care of that horse. Yes. And it's not even worth it. Just get a regular whispering horse that you can ignore whenever you need to. Listen, young Griffin, it's so important that you don't actually choreograph a dressage routine to Kid Rock's um, I'm going to be a cowboy baby because the judges are going to find it pretty distasteful. And in the future, you're going to find Kid Rock's sort of politics also pretty distasteful. So that's just a heads up. Uh, Also, sell your Yahoo stock. Depending on how far along ago I was, I guess it's like, what, a decade? So what we said, 10 years? Whatever, however long it was, sell your Yahoo stock, younger Justin. And this also like, applies yeah. to both uh, equestrianism and stocks. Buy apples. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I like that joke. Hey, thank you. Hey, is yeah. it, can I ask you guys a question? Yeah. Is Apple still also called Macintosh? <laughs> No, hold on. 
was the company called Macintosh? And then they just named... That would be like if McDonald's was just like, we're called burgers now. We're called french fries. Come to us for... Or was the computer called the Macintosh? Hold on. The computer was called the Macintosh because of the Apple thing, I would assume. <laughs> I do. I, I think you would assume it's called the... That because Do you the, think that there was the somebody Apple. that when they were like, we're going to call the company Apple, there were people who were like, that's going to get fucking confusing. Well, just Do you guys confusing. sell apples? Do you think that when they came out there and Steve was like, our company's name is Apple. Do you think there were some Apple companies that were like, ah, oh, fuck. That's shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I wish we, fuck, I wish we thought of that. Can you imagine? We would just, just why do we call ourselves Sweet Crunch? That is not a good company name. And you know, I'm really glad that they did all that focus testing or else their like original desktop computer would have been called the Apple Granny Smith. And I just don't think that would have sold as well as the Macintosh. This is the this is the Apple book. This is the Apple Sweet Crunch. It's the most powerful computer known to man. This ah, is damn. the Apple Red Delicious. It's right they there. could do a Fuji. I think that would be a good Apple line. Fuji. Like, f- the Fuji. The Apple can... Pink Lady. All right, how many apples does Travis know name? Many of? other apples you know. Don't Google. I'll know if you Google. I'll hear it. The Hold on. Nobody, apple hey, sour. That's it. Nobody Google. <laughs> <laughs> um, Justin, do uh, you want to know about apples, the sweet edible fruit produced by the Malice <laughs> Pamela? Well, <laughs> I know this with my brain from school. We grew 84.6 million tons of apples in 2014. So when you say we, you mean like the planet? No, me. <laughs> okay. A lot of work, planting 84.6 million tons worth of apple trees. And now you're trying to sell them. I got so many apples, y'all. I would like to be the first to apologize for this dumber than usual episode <laughs> of My Brother, My Brother. And okay, me. yes. Even for us. This is a pretty dumb one. Yeah, sure. Uh, how about we do one more question because we had a long piss break in there and a. Uh, uh, okay. And yeah, we'll make this sure. one real smart. Oh, no. I figured out why this is our dumbest episode. Why? Because this is episode 404. So it's, it's not working. A, it's an error code. So my girlfriend goes to college. At least that was funny. So my girlfriend goes to college and she is very. We did in- this one. Georgie oh, and Ron. Oh, God. Travis. What? So why are you blaming Travis? I f- he distracted me with the 404 thing, and then I 404 <laughs> the link to the question. I have, a, I have a Yahoo real quick. This one's sent in by Merritt Palmer. Thank you, Merritt. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user, so I'll call him D- Dougie. Asks, has the human body evolved for fist fighting? Mm. A lot of people sent this one in. Is the human body designed by evolution for fist fighting? Mm. Let me think. Uh, let me pose. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's well, pretty. Your body. That's some is. smooth action. I've never done a fist fight, so I can't really be a voice of authority about this. Um, but my gut said, my gut says yes. I think we probably either we had different priorities throughout the ages. One was just sort of hiding and survival, and then using rudimentary tools, and then we kind of peaked, and then it was like, psh, I don't know fist fighting it would be pretty cool to be very good at and so our fist got bigger our arm got mm-hmm. stronger bodies got better at taking the fist punches mm-hmm. um i don't know my i'm, yeah. a, be- I'm a beautiful machine of f- uh, fury and violence well that's well, when i look at my body i'm looking at my body for the first time and just think i'm a beautiful machine of fury and violence i didn't know it until this moment i'm thinking about ev- how every every piece of my body is designed to be better at fist fighting yeah so right. break it down I'm- Bite, bite for bite for me. Well, I have the beard, which protects my jaw. Yeah. It's like natural yeah. armor. Um, My glasses, which, of course, grow out of my face that protect my <laughs> eyes. Well, your eyes got bad. And that was evolution's way of saying you need some sort of covering on here for people with, you know, sh- sharper knuckles. Yeah. And then I turned 22 and started packing on the LBs to protect my guts. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I got a little extra padding there. So if someone tries to punch me in the guts, they're like, oh, I can't I, even get through it. And I remember that, Travis, on your 22nd birthday, we got in a fist fight and I beat the snot out of you, dude. Yeah. And you yeah. said, I'm making the decision today to, you know, add some add some, some padding. And I did. And, and you did. also, my fists are three feet wide. Travis just he, got the Everlong hands. He's got Everlong hands in this one. I've got Ed for long hands, and so 
They let me punch better and punch like six people at a time. It's tough to know this personally, right? Because that's not how evolution works. You don't you don't use a leaf stone on yourself and then turn into Venusaur. It's like you can't see that. But um, I have a son now, and when I look at his beautiful fists, all I can think is, "Wow, we're really moving in that direction, huh?" We're really moving in sort of a fist fight. And I don't want my son to ever get in a fist fight, but I know that his body, because of evolution and how it works, is going to be just crazy Better. and wild in the in the ring or the, you know, wherever it is. He has to fight with his fists. Do yeah. you think Glass Joe from Punch Out was like the last evolutionary link we had to that line of humanity? Like he was the last one and you just punched him out? Because we evolved past it, obviously. I haven't seen anybody. With his particular malady. You're but. right. Yeah, it's kind of like the evolution of man, of like seeing the monkey turn into the person, which is like, <laughs> science is still out on that one. <laughs> it's a fun yeah. it's a fun theory, but uh, still waiting to hear back on that one. But you can sort of follow the same trajectory going from Glass Joe to King Hippo. You see King Hippo and you're like, perfect specimen. King Hippo. <laughs> of punching. Of punching. His body, is, his body can do nothing else. He leaves the ring after punching so good because his body's been perfectly tuned for that purpose. And he walks out of the ring and like, tries to open a door and can't because his body just, so he punches it right open. And of course that works and, you know, punches spaghetti into his mouth. <laughs> you know, I've never seen the wrestler, but this is what I assume the wrestler is like. <laughs> yeah. It's Mickey Rourke V King hippo from uh from punch out. And it's just like Mickey Rourke wrestling food into his face. Or... We're, we're starting a new podcast about us guessing what's in the wrestler. It's called, we'll get it right next year. Mm. And it's about us guessing about that. <laughs> it's called I'll oh, get it right next year too. <laughs> the sequel to the podcast that paid us to advertise them. I'm gonna Google real King Hippo because I need to know if King Hippo but real. King Hippo versus Prince Mustard. Is <laughs> the thing about King Hippo at uh, what evolution told us is like your instinct would be the perfect puncher would have few places to punch but what king hippo does it's his he says there's many places to punch so that he can take more of them you know what i mean <sighs> if you think about like you have more body mass so mm -hmm. it's like there's more space for you to store punches yeah now, probably use. probably king hippo is god no played problems. god played a joke on him well one problem juice and that is his huge weak point designated by an x-shaped bandage that he has over his belly button and i guess it's because his body got so crazy that and so perfect for fighting and so crazy that he needed something to hold his you know punching guts in and that is this bandage and it god hippo did you not even think about making it like flesh colored at least or, <laughs> or just not an x shape but yeah, like, you could have made it any shape, pal. Turn that shit like 45 degrees, you got a plus sign. If he just hiked his pants up, nobody would have any fucking clue what to do with him. Just pull your pants up, King Hippo. And then no one will know. Oh, um, I will say thank you, Wikipedia, for clarifying that King Hippo is a fictional boxer mm. from Nintendo's Punch-Out. Thank you for clarifying that, Wikipedia. Um, that, folks, that's good. This is the ideal us. male body. Come on. <laughs> Uh, th thanks for listening to our show. Uh, we are going to be next week. This is your last movement man before this ha this happened. No, sorry, this week when you're hearing this, we are going to be in Detroit and St. Louis, or more accurately, St. Louis and Detroit. Uh, we really hope that you all come out to those shows. They are going to happen on Thursday and Friday this week. Thursday, St. Louis, Friday. Detroit, but the show start at 7 p.m. Um, the St. Louis Peabody Opera House, Detroit Masonic Temple Theater. You can go to bit, uh, sorry, uh, McElroyShows.com slash tours to find links to those. We really hope you'll come out there. Uh, uh, we got some good seats. We're also going to be in left. Columbus. I don't think you yeah. said that, but is that one Probably, sold out? It's sold out. So. Oh, sorry, Columbus. But, um, or this is almost sold out. So maybe it's not 100%. Oh, no, no. Nope. Website says sold out. So Just sold out. the last ticket while recording this. Thanks, Derek. If you can get to those shows, we really hope you do, because it's going to be a fun time. Uh, and uh. don't forget to send in your questions, both regular and Yahoo, and be sure to put in the subject line, Detroit show, St. Louis show, or Columbus show. 
Um, I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song, It's a Departure, off the album Putting the Days to Bed. It is a very good album. We're very grateful that uh, we are allowed to use it as our theme song. And I want to thank Max Fun for having us on the network. You can go to MaximumFun.org and check out all the great shows there, shows like Stop Podcasting Yourself and Tights and Fights and the Beef and Dairy Network and so many more at MaximumFun.org. And if you want to hear or see other stuff that we do, you can go to McElroyShows.com. Also, um, in case you missed it last week, we are going to be on the Joko Cruise this year, on the Joko Cruise 2019, and those cabins are selling really quickly. Um, so if you'd like to join us on the cruise, it is incredibly fun. Uh, JOCOcruise.com is where you need to head to get those tickets before they sell out. JOCOcruise.com. Um, also, I don't know if we've mentioned it in a while, but we are releasing a graphic novel uh, of our first arc of the Adventure Zone, here there be Gerblins. You can get that at theadventurezonecomic.com. Um, we have a lot of merch for the shows with a lot more coming out. You'll find that at McElroyMerch.com. And Justin and Sydney are writing a Sawbones book that you can pre order now. Yes, that, that we just put those pre orders up. If you go to bit.ly forward slash Sawbones book, uh, if you never listen to Sawbones, if you have listened to Sawbones, I think that's all the people. On Earth. Universe. Yeah. yeah. That's everybody. Please uh, pre-order that. It's got uh, Sid and I wrote it, are writing it, are finishing it. It's got illustrations by Taylor Smurl, her sister, who's uh, who's very gifted and uh, does a great job with it. And it's going to be, it's a fun, creepy read with no swears. So it's great for kids and non-kids. Either way. Again, everyone. Uh, here's a final Yahoo that was sent in by Anna Davis. Thank you, Anna. It's Yahoo Answers user question mark. Hey, guys. The fuck's going on with this website? Sell your fucking Yahoo stock now. Buy uh, apples. Uh, I, I'm going to say this one was, sent in, uh, was asked by Macintosh, who asks, What is that one movie where Jenna Z. Lohan switched bodies with Jamie Lee Curtis? Not Freaky Friday, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This is my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Judge John Hodgman ruled in my favor. Judge John Hodgman ruled in my friend's favor. Judge John Hodgman ruled in my favor. I'm Judge John Hodgman. You're hearing the voices of real litigants, real people who have submitted disputes to my internet court at the Judge John Hodgman podcast. I hear their cases. I ask them questions. They're good ones. And then I tell them who's right and who's wrong. Thanks to Judge John Hodgman's ruling, My dad has been forced to retire one of the worst dad jokes of all time. Instead of cutting his own hair with a floby, my husband has his hair cut professionally. I have to join a community theater group. And my wife has stopped bringing home wild animals. It's the Judge John Hodgman podcast. Find it every Wednesday at MaximumFun.org or wherever you download podcasts. Thanks, Judge John Hodgman.